Oi, oi, oi. This is big. I have our next lead. Meet me as soon as you can. In 100 meters, turn right. Horizon Arcade event will begin any minute now. Enjoy! of Lady Sydney's papers, original drafts of El Camino. She made pencil sketches of formations that I recognize in the Valle de las Ranas, and she sketched one of the statues. Lead the way. Okay, okay, so, uh, they had a fantastic creatures carved in rock, uh -huh. and she found the statue early one morning, and <laughs> get this. It was after a rainstorm. And this is another statue of Tlaloc. That is interesting. Let's see if we can find it. El Valle is east of Guanajuato. Mira, let's go. Valle de las Ranas means Valley of the Frogs, though I always thought the stones looked more like fantastical creatures. And Lady Sydney did too. She got sketches in her book. Imagínatelo, imagine it. Explorers like Lady Sydney came all this way with nothing but ganas y un gran amor for the wilds of Mexico. She sounds like someone I know. <laughs> yes, yo. I shoot cars for the festival. You do all the work. And my ride is a lot faster than her wagons, no? <laughs> we have slightly more than one horsepower. Bueno, I suppose reading El Diario is one of the reasons I became una fotógrafa. I wanted to capture the same belleza she did.
Today, the Valle de las Ranas is one of the most visited natural wonders in Mexico. Lady Sydney definitely knew a marvel when she saw one. But the guidebooks don't say anything about a Tlaloc statue here. <laughs> I have it! No, perdón, no hay tiempo para explicar. Just come and meet me. In 400 meters, turn right. Turn right. Mira, mira, I cross-referenced the final pages of the book with all the other papers I could find, and it's Ekbalam. It has to be. Lady Sydney Wolverstone's expedition headed south to Ekbalam. Balam was only properly studied in the 90s, but we know very little about it, actually. In fact, researchers are divided on exactly how much of what we know about the Toltecs is historical and how much is Aztec legend. So why are we going to Ekbalam and not Tula? Wolverstone's book doesn't call it Ekbalam, of course, but she describes a large group of buildings, perhaps 20 or more, and a large oval palace. <laughs> and listen to this. Three large statues of the sort I have found in other places. Three? I'm pretty sure I only saw two. No, that's not all. She also wrote, the third largest of them in the same stone I have come to recognize lay to the south of the complex, only barely visible in the driving rain. Well, let's get there before the rain stops then.
right. The third one is supposed to be to the south of the site. Is the rain letting up? Let's not dawdle then. Hang on tight. To the building and... <laughs> there! There it is! It's been fun, though I do feel like there should have been treasure at the end of it. Well, maybe... The treasure was the friends we made along the way? Aha, uh -huh. you said that, not me. <laughs> so that's that. There's one more thing. According to the book, Wolverson took a jade statue from the site, but lost it in the flash flood. I'll try and work out where that was. I'll call you as soon as I know. Now I'm intrigued. Call me, yeah? Wanna see? Of course! On my way. Alright, don't panic, but I think I'm onto something big with this latest car rumor. Start having a sniff around the festival. And keep quiet about it, yeah? This episode of Mexican Automotive History with Ramiro is about the Baja 1000. You are very perceptive, my friend. This dune buggy was the first car to race here. Let's take it for a spin. The Baja 1000 is probably the most prestigious race held in Mexico. Do you know how it all started? I assume the Mize Max has something to do with it. Correct again. The Baja 1000 started as a very elaborate marketing campaign for the car you're driving. But let me start from the beginning. On the 22nd of March, 1962, Dave Ekins and Billy Robertson did the first real Baja run. They went from Tijuana to La Paz in 39 hours, 56 minutes, on new Honda CL72 Scrambler motorcycles. So they probably were a bit sore afterwards. They got a lot of media coverage though. A year later, Bayer started to work on a prototype buggy he called Old Red in his garage in Newport Beach. It was based on the VW Beetle and it paved the way for what we know as buggies. Cars that are built for off-roading using the Beetle as a donor chassis. 
But I guess they wanted even more publicity because in April 1967, Myers decided to make an attempt at breaking Eakin's record. And it worked! Myers did it in 34 hours and 45 minutes, beating Eakin's for more than five hours. The rivalry was known as Buggy Beats Viking Bach. Sounds like something you did back in the UK, doesn't it? became an overnight sensation as a result, and suddenly they were friendly races all across the Vaca. It wasn't long before they realized they needed something more organized. That was Mexican 1000. Guess who won the inaugural event? Pass Max? You're on fire today! Yes, in 27 hours and 38 minutes. The official race was 100 miles shorter than the original route, but it's still impressive. The Mexican 1000 was later renamed to the Baja 1000 and is run to this day. At this rate, you would have had a shot at the original record. I love that story. My abuela used to tell it to me at least once a year. <laughs> 